know some people are probably thinking because we're talking about butters and oils and going, and they're probably like freaking out a little bit, like, oh my God, that's so calorie dense and you could overeat. But here's the thing where you get in trouble with all these things is people add that to an already high processed food diet yeah. of, oh, and over consuming. And then they're also having oils and butters and stuff on their food. If you are eating from this list, and that is your source of fats, mm -hmm. you're going to be fine. Yes. You really are going to be fine. Like, Especially if you eat your protein first, right? Yes. Then you're, then you're going to be absolutely okay. Yeah, and you're, as long as you're not drinking your olive oil and you know yeah. eating cubes of butter for a snack, you're literally going to be fine. All right, check this out. Here's what we're going to talk about today. The best foods you can eat for your physique. You know, this is based off of our experience training clients. These foods tend to lead to great outcomes, so I think we should... List well, them out. I think we we constantly on the show tell people that you know we would just advise clients eating whole foods, and we we push people away from the process and just doing that alone, they would get in great shape and all the results that they would have. But what we haven't done before is give a list of our some of our favorite proteins, fats, carbs, and what foods would we like encourage our clients or personally ourselves to eat. And so I'm actually really excited to talk about this because the list as we are building is literally like, these are all the foods that I rotated through like competing. Yes. Uh, yes. In fact, uh, the, the, the idea was let's make a list of, you know, a, a short, a relatively short list, but give people still varieties. Like we listed 14, 14 foods that it, literally, now you don't have to do this. And we know that life is includes more variety and whatever, but if you did, just stick to these foods here, you'd have a very good diet. In fact, if you just stick to these foods here, you you without counting calories yeah. or anything like that, you're probably going to end up relatively lean, relatively fit because yeah. they're so nutrient dense, they produce satiety, um, and they're very valuable. They're Especially very sometimes if you, it's okay. not, yeah, sometimes it's just nice to not have a ton of options. You True. Know? It's really right. limited so you can stay focused. And the simplicity a lot of times win in, in terms of like uh, – me approaching something to just like grasp my head around it. Yeah. Especially if you still follow some of the principles that we talk about, like for example, eating your protein first. Oh, thank you. Yes. So if you, if you re recall some of the other things we talk about as far as advice to our clients, one of those being like not giving them limitations saying you can't or can't have this, like, and just saying, okay, when you sit down and you eat, eat the protein first and then allow that to dictate how much of the other stuff that you eat. I think that'll make you paired with these foods. I'll I'll take the challenge that you'll get in some of the best shape you've ever been in just sticking to this list. Absolutely, 100%. And I, even now, these are, these are largely the foods that I tend to eat and stick to. And, and here's the criteria. So the criteria, just before we get into these foods, was these foods have to be easily accessible, relatively easily accessible. For the most part, uh, almost all of them, easily digestible for most people. Okay, yeah. so there's like one food on here where you might have an issue with digestively. But for the most part, all these foods, for most people can digest them very easily. Relatively inexpensive. So what we didn't want to do is list some weird, you know, tropical fruit that, you know, <laughs> you can't barely find or whatever that, you know. We, we want to list Exotic, foods Exotic, uh, acai thing. Yeah, like realistic, accessible, nutrient-dense, healthy, um, and taste good. And these foods all taste good. So we're going to start with uh, the proteins, so the foods that make up kind of that protein category. And number one on the list has to be eggs. Absolutely has to be eggs. It is one of the world's most perfect proteins. This is, scientists have said this for a long time. The amino acid profile is incredible, meaning if you, uh, we all know that if you eat a high protein diet, the protein sources don't make that big of a difference. But if you don't eat a super high protein diet, the sources make a big difference. Egg proteins stimulate muscle protein synthesis, typically more than other proteins. Also, whole eggs, the yolk in particular, yeah. is full of natural cholesterol, which is great for strength and recovery. It's not bad for you. That's what they used to say, but now we know that's not true. And packed full of nutrients, including choline, which now they're starting to say should be an essential, should be declared an essential nutrient. Exceptionally great for the brain. So eggs, eggs for sure. Now, what are some of your favorite ways to eat eggs? Are you somebody who will you know, hard boil them, snack on them through the day? Are you somebody who will scramble them up and overeat? Like, how do you like to I, make There eggs is no way I don't win? like eggs. I like them all, but my favorite is hard over easy. Is so convenient. Boiled, like yeah. Like you said, yeah, for snacks and things, you know, to constantly have that accessibility to it. I think that's a great way to use it. So yeah. I want to combine this one with the second one because of how I utilize my eggs. 
The only drawback I would say of eggs is even though it's it's this perfect balance, it takes a lot of them to get a high protein meal. Right? Yeah, you so, have to eat like you know between four to six, right? Depending on your protein. At least that's and that's a, still not a high protein meal. Yeah. That would be a good protein yeah. meal, right? Not high, not 40, 50 grams. Like you want 40, 50 grams, you're having to eat seven, eight eggs, that's right. right? To get up there. So yeah. and most people don't eat seven or eight eggs. So the second source of protein is your your meat source, right? So your your chicken, your steak, your ground turkey, beef, like these are fish, we can fish, fish, in right? There. So all those are and so what I like to do is since those are traditionally ate at lunch and dinner, I love to always save some of that meat and put it in a scramble in the morning yeah. time. Because most people, when they cook, there's always like a little bit of leftovers. And so Katrina and I, when we prepare our dinner, we're if, if, any of these meats, we always choose from that. We always over prepare for what we need for dinner because we take that leftover and then I'll make it into a and you scramble. combine it. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever had um, smart. you ever had smoked salmon with eggs? Really yeah. good. Like what they call it, locks or whatever. Locks. Yeah. Exceptionally good. Um, animal proteins or animal sources of protein, so like chicken, beef, pork, fish, very, very high quality protein. And animal meats are the most nutrient dense foods you'll find on the planet. Now, some people may be like, what? I thought it was the goji berry or the whatever. No, you can literally, now I'm not recommending this. This is not what I, I don't think this is ideal. However, if you were stuck on an island and you had to pick one food to eat for the next six months and not die, it would have to be an animal, animal meat. meat. You could literally go steak. I'm just gonna eat steak and you would not likely, very likely or very unlikely, I should say, to have any nutrient deficiencies. You can't do that with any other single food. And that's because it's so nutrient dense with the B vitamins and iron and everything else in there. And people say, well, what about vitamin C? Fresh meat by it. So when you have fresh meat, it is anti-scurvy, meaning that if you eat fresh meat, it, it does help solve scurvy and studies have shown this. So it is phenomenally nutrient dense. And of course, the, it's hard to find a protein source that's more concentrated, easier, better. Than these animal sources. Yeah, nothing's really more bioavailable. It's like it's all the the work has been done for you, and you're now reaping that uh, mm -hmm. from the animal. And extremely satiating too. Very satiating because of because of the high protein and fat that's in most meats. Then you're also going to feel full and good after you eat that meal. And that's part of the trick and strategy of making sure you eat that first. And this is one of those things that again I didn't have to tell clients you know, how many ounces exactly they needed to have of it or what they couldn't eat, like don't have any of these carbohydrates. It was like literally just make sure we're getting a good yeah. source of protein and eat that first and all the other stuff yep. started to fall Yeah, I would on. tell clients, depending on what their, their protein goals were, you know, eat. make sure you eat 30 grams of protein in your meal first and then eat the rest. And all of them were like, I can't finish the rest of the meal when I do it that way. Yep. And that's it. And, and it's not even, you're not even trying. You're not even trying to cut calories. But you also, I want to emphasize this, get the nutrients that you need. Because one of the problems with eating less is you also get less nutrients, but not if you eat nutrient dense foods, animal meats are the most nutrient dense foods you can find uh, on the planet or some of the most. All right. The next one, this is the only food, one of the only foods in the list that you may have an issue digesting, but if you don't, it's a super food. And I know there's been a lot of propaganda and information. Totally. It's all garbage. Uh, the truth is this is a super food and it's whole milk, whole milk, especially well-sourced whole milks, like raw milk from healthy cows, for example, is exceptionally healthy for you, so long as you can tolerate. I can't have dairy, so I, this is not for me. But if you can tolerate dairy, you have an excellent source of fat, protein, you even have some sugars in whole milk. In fact, there was a study that compared milk to protein shake for recovery and protein synthesis, and they found identical. It was, it was, the, it was I think it was same. actually chocolate milk they did it with. Yeah, did they do that? Just because yeah, the extra sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You it's... know? But whole milk is exceptional. It's cheap. You drink it. It's uh it's got nutrients in it. And I say whole milk because studies are showing that fat free milk in the eighties and nineties a lot of kids and, and families drank fat free milk because we were told fat was really bad for you. Turns out fat free milk actually resulted in people having issues with bone strength and density and stuff like that because mm. you need the fats yeah. to absorb the fat soluble nutrients yeah you're left with just with the lactose at that point yeah well. no yeah you got lactose and protein that's and, it. And, and none of these fats that none help you absorb, that absorb fat uh, you know soluble do you uh, know nutrients. the statistics on people that actually have an intolerance to milk but if if they were to actually eat drink raw milk with the natural digestive enzymes that are in it 
that they end up end up cooking out of it when you homogenize and pasteurize it? Yeah. So what happens uh, is like how many people actually would probably be okay with milk a, if they had that source? It's a sizable minority. It's not a majority, but um, what happens with milk is you have um, lactose in there, and so a lot of people who can't tolerate milk, it's the lactose that they have issues with breaking down. Raw milk from healthy cows, right? Good, well sourced contains uh, some of the lactase enzyme already in there. Um, and so it's easier to digest for some people. Um, now, another thing you could do is you could also take a lactase pill, which is just the enzyme, very cheap, by the way. You can buy them mm -hmm. uh, at the store and then have milk and you're totally fine. I'm intolerant to, I have an intolerance to dairy proteins. So I can have lactose-free milk, all that stuff, and it would still bother me. So some, uh, there's, a, there's a nice chunk of people that no matter what, they can't do dairy. And I've also heard goat milk is an option for people. For some people. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in terms of an alternative that they can actually digest better. Right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode MAPS Power Lift. It's a powerlifting workout program to help you hit new PRs in your bench press, deadlift, and your squat. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. And then you'll get free access to MAPS Powerlift. Also, we got a sale going on all month long. The RGB bundle is 50% off, and MAPS suspension is 50% off. All right, so the RGB bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Performance, and Kettlebell for Aesthetics, the Sexy Athlete Modification, and the Butt Builder Blueprint. Okay, so that's all in the RGB bundle. That's 50% off. And then MAPS suspension is a suspension trainer workout program. So if you're interested in the 50% off, Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the coupon code JULY50, JULY50, with no space, for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. So let's get to the vegetables, okay? Now, a lot of people, we are told, uh, or, or mainstream media or fitness nutrition media, that kind of stuff, will say vegetables are the best sources of nutrients. Um, in some cases, yes, but uh, really what you're getting with vegetables, uh, what you're really getting with vegetables our fibers, mm -hmm. digestibility, it helps things move through the body. You're not getting, you are getting some nutrients. I'm not going to say that you aren't. There are some nutrients found in vegetables that are pretty cool, but Mostly really what micro. you're looking for are easily digested, digestible vegetables that help you process the proteins or whatever that you ate. And so the first one in this category of vegetables are leafy greens. And if you want to make it very digestible, you cook them. Okay. <laughs> Raw leafy greens are harder to digest than like boiled spinach, for example, right. which you could really boil it down, eat a lot of spinach in a small amount, add that to your protein meal, especially if you're eating high protein, you know, tends to bog you down and your digestion. You ever seen how much a massive box yeah, it's of- like, It's like this much. Yeah, you cook the spinach and it comes down I to know. like the, the tiniest serving. So, but I mean, awesome though, how, de how it becomes super dense, easy for you to digest versus trying to chew on that raw. What is, what is the difference between, because I know that it wasn't, didn't they do something one time where they actually had people eating a ton of raw vegetables and they had all kinds of adverse effects of it because they couldn't digest it? Yeah, so there's there are uh, anti-nutrients and defense mechanisms pre uh, presented in plants to prevent so plants can't run away like animals can, right? And they can't bite you or whatever. Some of them can't, most of them can't. And the way that they create defenses is they they produce compounds that make them hard to digest, okay? Now, the way around that is you cook them. You cook them very well. And what that does is it pre-digests them so that you can digest the, the food very well. Now, very isn't long. that the angle that the hardcore carnivore- yes meat eaters they use that as like right. the the big mm -hmm. like why plants are so bad is because they the have these toxins but and... once you cook that you pretty much eliminate you them. you get rid of a lot of them and yeah. humans have been eating you know vegetables for a long time and most people have no problem consuming vegetables there is a small percentage of people that have immune reactions to almost everything in which case a carnivore diet it's the only time i think it's appropriate but for most people there's lots of benefit from consuming these foods leafy greens has to be number one the second one is asparagus. Well-cooked asparagus. I like to put them in the oven, grill them. They're, they're easy to digest for most people. They taste good. And bodybuilders like them because they have a little bit of a diuretic effect. Okay, yeah. so bodybuilders like them because they help get water mm. out of the body. It's not a huge effect, but this is why you'll see bodybuilders often eating asparagus. I always. That was like my thing. It's a natural diuretic. I don't remember what the, the number was. You, you think it's a small effect? I think it's pretty... I think well, it's small in comparison to actual diuretics. Like you're oh, not gonna eat a oh, bunch of asparagus and yeah, then get, you know, cramp up from losing, you know, it's like it'll help balance out water. So I used to recommend asparagus to my female clients who would hold a lot of water during certain times of their of their period. Yeah. 
I'd say, hey, eat uh, asparagus with two or two of your meals and see if that helps. And it does. It actually helped them with their water retention, it actually held you know less water. But it tastes really good. It's fibrous. Um, and it's great for digestion, and most people can digest uh, asparagus pretty well. So that's got to be up. Now, something we haven't said so far talking about these, because I know, and this will become a question, so I want to address it before we get much further. As far as, like, the, the preparation of these foods, like, as far as how you cook them, um, yeah. when it comes to the meats, obviously stay away from fried stuff. But you can go to town on seasoning, I used to tell my clients. Yeah. I don't care how, I mean, you got your favorite, you know, salt or seasoning, Miss, Miss Dash or whatever, Montreal, what, go to town, season it up. I mean, if we're eating all whole foods, right. your, 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 your salt and sodium intake is going to be minimal. Such so. a good point. All these foods are low in sodium. Even if you salt them, you're probably going to still need more sodium, especially if you uh, work out, sweat, and don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. So have fun. So what I do with steak, for example is if I buy a steak from the store or let's say butcher box comes in or whatever, I'll defrost it and I'll salt both sides, put it in the fridge for six hours or a day, then bring it out and then season it again and cook it. And it's like, it's incredible. It comes out, you know, really, really good. All right. The next one is technically not a vegetable. I believe zucchini is a fruit, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I think seeds? so. Is it a fruit, yeah. Doug, or is it a vegetable? Maybe look that up. He's going to look that up. Yeah, right I don't now. know. Yeah. I don't know that. But zucchini, uh, very easily digested. It really helps people with processing their proteins and fats. Tastes really good. And it's again, it's another bodybuilding food. Bodybuilders definitely like their zucchini. And I think it's for that reason. It's considered a fruit. It is a fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did not know that. By oh. the way, fruits tend to be, because fruits are the part of the plant that the plant wants you to eat, fruit is, um, is always better tolerated than vegetables for most right. people. Much so, easily But digestible. zucchini's got like these vegetable properties because of the fiber, the way it tastes. And so... I love zucchini, and it's. I have never had a client that had any issues digesting zucchini if it was cooked uh, really well. Maybe raw, but cooked well. Well, the, along the lines of fruit, here's the one that I think can creep up on you on calories and sugar um, if you just eat all fruit. I used to tell my clients to stay. And I, I wouldn't even consider a zucchini, so now I would now say this: you know, zucchini and berries. Berries are great. Because berries are high in fiber, high in antioxidants, and the ratio of fiber antioxidants to calories is the lowest of all fruits. Yeah, you could eat a lot of raspberries or blueberries. You don't get a ton of calories, but you get a lot of fiber. Yes. That's, and I remember you telling me that that was one of your go-to ways it's to a, add fiber. It's the biggest bang for your buck as far as Do you know fruit. off the top of your head how much per... Oh, you know, I don't anymore what the exact what the exact ratio... I just know that it's the best. Like, as far as if I want something that is low calorie and I want to get a, a ton of fiber in, like that, obviously vegetables would be higher in mm -hmm. fiber and lower in calorie. But I mean, I'm getting fruit too. So I'm getting the benefits of the antioxidants and I get something that I, I can enjoy. Like having a big old cup or two cups of blueberries is not that high of calories so no you know that uh that ber berries are the superfoods of the of the plant uh world um and i remember when first it was goji berry then it yeah. was what was that one what's that one from brazil acai acai berry yeah. these are this they're packed full of and it's really and, just their blueberries in that location right? you know so identical you know, a, blue, a blueberry kicks the crap out of all exotic and we can't just like go outside and pick it it's exactly here. right blueberries it, um, are super high yeah. in those antioxidants that they talk about super high high in fiber but we don't sell blueberries because they're everywhere so yeah, <laughs> yeah. if i want to sell you something weird i'm gonna i'm gonna go pick a a fruit from a country that you're not familiar with but no blueberries you you put them up next to a side berries Goji berries. I mean, it's either the same or better. And by the way, I don't. I when I when I talk to clients about this, I always remind them that I'm not demonizing other fruits. I'm not saying you can't have a peach, you can't have an apple. A banana's bad for you. There's and there is benefits to all those other fruits. They just they one thing you have to be careful that we've bred them to be ginormous. So if we've talked about this on the podcast before, like a small banana, what they would, what you would think is a small banana is like an extra large banana. It's like 50 grams of carbs. Yeah, yeah. a lot of sugar. So there's a, a lot of sugar, a lot of, a lot of carbs, a lot of calories in that one banana. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. It's just that type of fruit can catch up on you really quick. So I always point them in like, listen, when it comes to berries, I, I let my clients kind of go to town when it comes to eating that stuff, but be very mindful if you're choosing fruits like apples and bananas and pears and stuff right. like that. Yeah. And I was always making sure like they're eating, um, you know, the actual fruit. And so they have to like eat through the skin. They get yeah. all those. Oh, yeah, the so yeah, so the, the time release thing too, in terms of like, you know, readily getting that sugar to hit the bloodstream. Like it has that natural 
a process all built in place from nature. Oh, watch your, you know, put a CGM on, uh, you know, a glucose monitor on and watch your glucose response to berries versus a banana. Oh, or, yeah. Or, you know, or an versus apple. Versus juice. Like, you know, or, a lot well, of people will oh, turn into juice. Well, uh, juice will be even worse. It's juice you, juice right? is like a soda. You, yeah. It's literally like if you drank a Pepsi and you drank uh, fruit juice, it would be probably yeah, identical. It's pure concentrated. Yeah, per, pure sugar. concentrate. All right, so let's get to your complex carbohydrates. Obviously, this is what fuels uh, your workouts, gives you the energy you need for explosive movement, stamina. Carbohydrates also can contribute to muscle growth. Um, and especially for people who are trying to eat more calories, carbohydrates are an easier way to bump calories because they're, they're of all the macronutrients, you know, proteins, fats, and carbs, carbohydrates are the least satiety producing, meaning that, you know, you'll if you eat a lot of protein, you're like, oh, I want to eat more. With carbohydrates, you can kind of push it a little further. The first one's got to be rice. And by the way, it's white rice. I know we're told that brown rice is better because they don't have the fiber whole, rip, you know, taken off whatever. The truth is brown rice contains anti-nutrients. Uh, and if you if they have studies on this, people just consuming brown rice actually start to develop nutrient deficiencies. It's harder to digest. White rice is actually superior. And by the way, from a calorie perspective, it's like almost you're splitting hair the difference. Yeah. They're almost identical. Yes, so yes. it's not like you're eating way better. But white rice is super one of my, here's what I love about white rice so much. Easy to digest. It's gotta be one of the easiest to digest starches that exist. In fact, I can't think of one that is easier to digest, just generally speaking, because obviously there's always gonna be outliers. But generally speaking, it's gotta be the easiest to digest that I can think of. It's very starchy, so you can get good, nice source of starchy carbohydrates that'll fuel your workouts. It's cheap. One of the cheapest foods in the planet is rice. It's got a long shelf life, so you can buy rice in a bag, leave it in the cupboard, and it's going to last you a and long it, time. And, and it's it, versatile. You can it make pairs, it so many different It ways. pairs with everything. Yeah. yeah. It goes so good with everything. Back to my like my breakfast hack, depending on if I'm trying to stay low calorie or I'm trying to bulk or whatever, I'll add rice to that. Mm -hmm. So I've got my I've I've got my meat and eggs in the morning, and if it's if I'm high calorie or I'm a high carb that day, I'll load it with a cup of rice in there. Mm -hmm. Also, another reason why I really like it: you already when you make rice, you have to measure it. So it's like one of those one of those foods that you oh you, sure that you train yourself to to measure. Yeah, because you're gonna you have a cup. You have yeah, to you have, so you know how much you're making, and it's really easy to titrate that. Like if I have a client and I know they consistently use rice, I can go like, hey, you know what? Instead of us, we've been consistently doing a cup of rice and all those meals, let's cut that down to a half a cup of rice. Here's, here's or a, hey, let's bump it to a cup and a half of rice. Yes, and here's a cheap, uh, like, you know, muscle building, nutrient dense, like easy to, you know, prepare, again, inexpensive food. You do rice with ground beef, scramble, throw in a couple eggs, and then on the side, you could have your cooked vegetables, and you got everything right there. You yeah. literally got your proteins, your fats, your starches, your vegetables, and you, and it was cheap. It was inexpensive, and, it, and you could produce it in bulk and make a bunch of meals uh, so you have your things and set you up for you. And you crack an over-easy egg over the top of that, and you've got a great, great breakfast food right Delicious. There. All that. right, so this next one was n not a food that anybody ate when I first got into fitness, Later on, blew up everywhere. It's because it's hard to say. Yeah, it's uh, quinoa. <laughs> or, quinoa. Yeah, quinoa. No, oh. quinoa. Quinoa is another gluten-free, um, you know, I think it's a seed or I think it's a seed if I'm not mistaken. Right. High in, in carbohydrates, nutrient dense, Isn't easy to digest. a bit of protein in there, there A decent well? amount of protein. Yeah, yeah it's got actually. a little bit of plant protein in there. Yeah. Right? Compared to most of the carbohydrates. And so sources. this I love for my clients that had a hard time eating larger portions of meat. So this is to be an example of where I would recommend quinoa over, say, rice. Like, let's say- Because it would add a little bit of protein. That's right. So if I have a client who's like, man, Adam, eating any more than four ounces of meat is just so hard for me. It just They have a hard time consuming that much. Then I would add, like, the the, the carbohydrate I'd want them to have is quinoa so I can help bump the protein intake. Yeah. Like now, I you know what I like quinoa? I like quinoa pasta. They make quinoa like pasta tubes or shells mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And I like it because obviously now you get the versatility of making like a pasta. Um, it's gluten free. Gluten free. And it tastes pretty good. Now, yeah. of course, it doesn't taste exactly like your regular, you know, uh, you know, wheat based pasta so or whatever. Is this a sprout technically? I think it's a seed. Maybe Doug can look seed up quinoa. I want to say it's a seed. I know it's considered a grain. 
Um, but it's easy to digest. This is what I like about it. It's a great source of those carbohydrates. It's I, I my go to. I think it's called. I think it's ancient something farms or ancient, something. I forget. Ancient the, grain is it? Ancient grain, the name of the brand. Yeah, there's uh, a brand that makes a ton of those of the quinoa pasta. Oh, yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. We live off of that. Like that's always in my cover. Is it a seed? Does it's a seed? Yeah, it is a seed. Okay. So which which you know uh, again um, seeds tend to be easily digestible um, in yeah. many cases. So all right, the next one. Justin loves this one. Uh, <laughs> potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes. <laughs> yeah. You know, potatoes are cheap. It's a very inexpensive, very high in starch. Yeah. Uh, they've got prebiotic uh, fibers in there, meaning that you can eat a potato and feed your microbiome. Uh, high in potassium. It's actually quite nutrient dense. In fact, again, not recommended, but there have been people that have survived off just eating potatoes for relatively extended periods of time. Um, and you can, they're so versatile. Like there's about, I, I don't know. Is there any food more versatile than potatoes? There's gotta be more dishes made with potatoes. Yeah. It, potatoes like, or rice. rice. I Just mean, like it, you said, rice. Yeah. Cause yeah. those two alone, those are really the only carbohydrate sources that are easily digestible. I don't have any inflammation. There's nothing as a result yeah. of that. Unless, you know, it's cooked with a certain type of oil or something that's going to irritate it. But uh, for the most part, the majority of clients and people I've worked with, like rice, potatoes, always did well. Yeah, yeah. no, it goes with everything. I think it's a, it's such an easy one to do. Now, the only add that I would add to that is I love messing with sweet potato and yams, and that would fall in the same category yes. as that. A um, little bit lower calorie, right? And even more, like, as far as digestibility. And also, you talk about uh, glucose stuff, so lower on the glycemic index, so you'll see even yeah. less of a I actually di I digest uh -huh. sweet potato better than potato. So, so if I'm going to eat, yeah. if I'm going to eat, like, 30, 40 grams of carbs, potatoes are fine. If I'm pushing it, like, 70, 80, then I'll go sweet potato because it's easier to, easier to digest. I think the, the, the prebiotic compounds in potato, the starches, feed the microbiome a lot or maybe too much for me and I'll get a little gassy. Sweet potato, though, I could throw that down. I it's also think that sweet potato and yams need literally nothing on them. Where white potato, I tend to want butter and salt. Oh yeah, and and who other. eats a plain potato? Yeah, I'll, I'll eat a, a plain sweet potato. I'll eat a plain, uh, I'll eat a plain yam and a sweet potato all day long because it's already got these great sweet flavors to it. So it really doesn't need anything. Maybe a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit of butter if you really want to spice it up. But a baked, regular baked potato. Tends to be a little bland and dry, a and we're chalky, yeah. yeah, we've trained ourselves to have I got cheese, eat. sour cream, and all this stuff yeah. on it. You know, I, so. Here, so here's an easy way to make a potato that I used to do back in the day when I would work in gyms and I had ten minutes to eat, and I would eat you know seven meals a day. I would bring potatoes for my carb sources, and it's super easy. Here's what you do: you take your potato, you wash it, you wrap it in a wet paper towel, put it in the microwave four minutes, take it out, turn it over four minutes. It's a baked potato. In the microwave. Yeah. Super, super easy. Peel the skin off. It's already cooked, and uh, you can add your butter Did you say whatever. poke all the holes in it, or no? I didn't hear you say that. No, I didn't poke no Oh, yeah, you poke oh, holes in the fork and if you want to cook it right. Oh, really? Yeah. That never, yeah. That never exploded for me. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah, you poke really? holes in it. It'll cook the center of it better, too. So you take a fork, and you stab it with a fork all the way around, do the same thing oh, you Oh, there said, you go. And then okay. it'll, it'll I never cook. did that before. You, you learn something new every day. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Are you kidding me? Microwave right, dude? What's I going know. on with you? <laughs> My mom did all the cooking. What button do I push on the microwave, anyway? Uh, all right, so now let's get into the fats, all right? So um, you're probably thinking, why would you add any fats? Because they're essential. Fats are essential. Uh, if you don't eat them, you'll die. You need essential fatty acids. And fats literally become the fat in your body, okay? So the types of fats you eat are actually extremely important. And I learned this from Max Lugavere. He really communicated this very well, whereas... If I have a high protein diet, the protein source doesn't make as big of a difference. If my calories are low, carbohydrate sources don't make that big of a difference, except for maybe my energy and appetite. But fats always make a difference. Low calorie, high calorie, healthy diet, unhealthy diet. These fats literally can produce or reduce inflammation, and they can help nourish the body or cause issues. So fats, very important. Let's start with the first one, raw nuts. Raw nuts are an excellent source of healthy fats. Now, why, why raw instead of roasted? Roasting them actually degrades some of the fats and makes them a little bit less healthy. Not that big of a deal, so roasted's fine too. By the way, peanuts are not a nut. So someone may hear this and say, well, I'll eat peanuts. Peanuts are actually a bean. Blew they're, my mind. They're a legume. I didn't know that either. Learning, you guys didn't know that? I'm learning so much today about yeah. food. Oh, wow. Well, well, you taught me about microwave. Fruit, How is like, it called a peanut and it's not yeah. a nut? Isn't that funny? That's so stupid. No, it's literally a legume. It's a bean. You they have grow underground. That? Huh? They grow underground. Mm. There's not peanut trees? <laughs> There's peanut plants, but underneath the roots is that's where the the, the peanuts. Are. Yeah, if you think of the shell of a peanut, 
it, it's like a like a green bean. It does look like a bean, but yeah. it's crunchy. Yeah, well, because they roast the shit. They, they roast them. Wow, and neither one of you guys do that? <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. great. No idea. And peanuts are okay, my favorite nut. No, right. I'm like, you so thought it no, was. No, it's your favorite right? bean, bro. Yeah, it's your favorite bean. <laughs> yeah. We actually didn't put beans on this list, and I actually would have beans on this list. You know too, why You know why I wouldn't put beans on the list? Why? I, because they are. It can be very nutrient-dense. They They can be high in protein. The digestibility is always iffy with beans. You got to really prepare them well. You got to soak them. You got to soak them overnight. Mess soak them over. You soak them over. The Look, there's the beans underground. What? I mean, the yeah, the peanuts potatoes. Underground. Wow. No, no, that's pe that's that's peanuts. What? Oh, it looks like potatoes. Yeah. You thought there was a potato tree? I mean, a, be a bean. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, a peanut no, tree. Potato potatoes grow underground. No, I didn't yeah, think do. there was a peanut tree. Yeah. <laughs> no, but raw raw nuts. So walnuts, Brazil nuts, really good, high in selenium. Now, though, okay, the one here of all the things that we have on this list. This is the one, though, that I would probably caution my clients the most with because nuts can sneak up on you calorie-wise. Well, yeah, you snack on them all day. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is the one where, like, I love those little tiny sandwich bags where, like, they're really, really small. This is can... the one I measure out. Yes. Yeah. Because you could say, I mean, I, I last night I had well, just like chips. You'll just keep Last night them. I had pistachios. And so I've, I've obviously weighed and measured, like, every food that I ever eat, right? So I know, like, what four or 500 calories of pistachios looks like. And it's actually not as much as you would think. Oh, it's like this much. And so <laughs> I use, I use like, my little red cup that I use a plastic, two red pl plastic cups, and I'm pour the serving of what I think is around four or 500 calories and I walk away from it. Otherwise, if I did the bag, I would go through four so or five here's, times that here, serving. There's a couple hacks you could do with, with nuts that'll help with this. One, eat them raw. Roasted are way more palatable and you'll overeat them. Raw, you actually find yourself eating less because it's not so, it's not like so tasty, right? And the second thing is to buy nuts in their shell and you actually have to crack the shell in order to eat it. It actually really reduces how many you eat and it slows you down. Yeah. Like if you, if you have to break pistachios out of the shell or walnuts out of the shell, you're not going to eat nearly as many as if they're just ready ready to eat yeah. sure. right out of that. Sure. By the way, do you guys know cashews are not a nut either? Wow. Yeah. I think they're a fruit, if I'm not mistaken. Look that up. Doug. Cashew a fruit? I believe so. I really? want to say it is. Yeah, maybe maybe I got that one wrong. But I know it's one of my favorites too, but I don't think it's a nut. Look that up, Doug. It's one of the high – It's well, if, if, if it's nut or not a nut. That's so crazy. It's in the mixed nut thing. What is it? They're Doug? classified as a type of tree nut. Oh, they are. Well, I was wrong then. There you go. I got it wrong. Uh, My bad. Uh, miss. Uh, one Son of, of a two. bitch. Shoop. We'll edit that out, Andrew. <laughs> uh, all right. Here's another good fat avocados. Yeah. Avocados. Oh, uh, yeah. Eat them while they're still available, everybody. It's a fruit. We're right. running out. But anyway, <laughs> avocados are excellent source of uh, both uh, fat and fiber. Yeah. It's a great source of fiber yeah. and potassium. And uh, they go good on tortillas. What do you tell us, Doug? Some more, some more interesting information. The fruits of the cashew, almond, and pistachio plants are not true nuts, but rather classified as droops. Droops or drupes are fruits that are fleshy on the outside and contain a shell covering a seed on the inside. So I was technically... You were kind of right. Fleshy. Actually. Mm, that's all right. That's as good as we're going to get there, Doug. Uh, all right. <laughs> Leave the dad to come Write that in down. and help you out. Right? Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Doug found the one website. Yeah. <laughs> it was a blog. <laughs> you know, it's some shit. But, avocado is such another great like great food that I yes. think pairs so well with all the these dishes too. Like you want to you want to like back to my breakfast. Like if I'm bulking, now I'm adding an avocado on top of that. So now I've got the potatoes and rice, I've got the meat, I've got the eggs, and now I'm gonna right. throw an avocado in there. Also. Have you it helps seen make things more satiating? Too. Have you seen the studies on uh, so for some people, uh, beef high fat beef like ground beef can cause a little bit of inflammation. Not but with most avocado, people. it cancels Throw it Throw in some avocado, yeah. and it actually helps with that inflammation because of the types of fats that are in I, avocado. I read that somewhere about how to, like, if a, if like a BLT burger uh, upsets you like that, try having avocado on it, and it mm -hmm. make, and supposedly helps a lot of people yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading Now, that. along those lines, avocado oil is a good oil to use uh, because it's... Uh, yeah. you know, get away from canola. It's, it's minimally processed. I mean, you can just squeeze an avocado, and you get avocado oil. Um, and it's it's easy to cook with, and it's really good. Which brings us to another oil, which is probably the king of oils uh, in terms of health. And it's what they think the primary reason why the Mediterranean diet is the healthiest diet, the healthiest kick-ass diet when they do these general comparisons. I know it's more complex than that, but whenever they talk about the best diet for health or whatever, Mediterranean diet always comes out on top. It's because of olive oil. Olive oil is extremely good for you. You put it on everything. It goes good on everything. It's it's got it's great for vegetables. You could add it to your meat. 
You could add it to your rice. You could add it to your potatoes. I mean, you could put it in your zucchinis. I mean, you could put almost everything that we talked about. Avocado will go with, yeah. and it's a great source. It of It enhances fat. all those those foods for sure. Oh, for the longest time, uh, I struggle with eating enough vegetables, and one of those things I'm, I told you guys, I think I brought this up. It wasn't until we Sal and Mind Pump when we started working together. And he would come in with these massive bowls of vegetables oh, yeah. and he'd have like olive oil drizzled all over it. And for some reason I still had, I, and as much as I had already moved past the, the anti-fat movement, but I had trained myself for so long to avoid fats in my early, early years of my career that I wouldn't think about even using uh, an oil on my vegetables because mm -hmm. that's not why I'd be eating it. But it's like, once I gave myself that freedom to do that and cooking your asparagus with a little bit of olive oil on it and then like throw it on the barbecue or something. Oh, like, oh my God. Yeah, man. olive oil, garlic powder, salt, yeah. almost on any vegetable baked in the oven comes out unbelievable. Yeah. It's so good. It's totally changed my relationship with vegetables. I mean, now that they, they taste amazing and it's not bad for you. So. Right. All right, last fat that's actually great. And I love this one because we were told for a long time, it's the worst, avoid yes, it, the don't eat it. But now we know it's not true. It's actually good for you, is butter. Butter is a wonderful fat. It's uh, for most people, most, I say most because there is a small percentage of people where saturated fats can cause some blood lipid issues. You probably know if that's you. But otherwise, butter is an excellent source of fat and you can cook well, very well with it, uh, with most things. And then in that category would be ghee, which is essentially clarified butter, meaning it's butter minus every little microscopic bit of uh, milk protein, which is why it appears to be Kind of clear, but really, really good source of fat. Which is, now, can you handle butter, or do you have to use ghee? I'm okay with butter. It's you got are. so little uh, milk proteins that it doesn't bother me. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. I wasn't yeah. sure about that. Now, ghee's a little bit lower calorie than butter would be, too. Ghee though. has n no milk proteins, and I can eat I could eat ghee by the by the tablespoon. I've actually done that. I've actually... I love the taste of ghee. And I know some people are probably thinking because we're talking about butters and oils and going, and they're probably like freaking out a little bit, like, oh, my God, that's so calorie dense, and you could overeat. But here's the thing. Where you get in trouble with all these things is people add that to an already high processed food diet yeah. of, oh, and over consuming. And then they're also having oils and butters and stuff on their food. If you are eating from this list and that is your source of fats, mm -hmm. you're going to be fine. Yes. You really are going to be fine. Like, Especially if you eat your protein first, right? Yes. Then you're, you're going to be absolutely okay. Yeah. And you're, as long as you're not drinking your olive oil and, you know, yeah. eating cubes of butter for a snack, you literally gonna be fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, butter, flour, sugar, that's not a great combo. But uh, <laughs> yeah, case, butter, yeah. throw some salt on that, man. And you I got mean, yourself. It, it pretty much, again, just like olive oil, like butter enhances a lot of the flavors of everything. Even like steak uh, is, is amazing. Well, you know, that's why butter got a bad, I think why old studies show that it was bad because people who ate a lot of butter put yeah. it on all kinds of everything, crazy shit. Basically, yeah, that wasn't good for you. So there you have it 14. Foods that literally, if you ate just from this list, now we're not recommending that. You could, you definitely want more variety. But if you did, you'd be a okay. You'd actually get great results. But here's the caveat: make sure you have the right macronutrients. So if I say just eat from this list and all you eat is berries and rice, well, obviously you're missing your proteins and your fat. So hit your protein targets first. The fats typically take care of themselves. Then throw in your carbohydrates. Eat from this list, and uh, you should get some pretty phenomenal results. All right, look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.